We now take you to a house in the suburbs of London. Yes, this is yet another sketch set in England somewhere, even though no one associated with the program is in any way British. Chalk it up to the author's off-kilter psyche, I suppose. See, now I'm even talking in Britishisms. At any rate, we remain at this row house in Putney. Putney? That's a weird name. And Cuthbert Mouldyweather, an arguably handsome man on the cusp of middle age and on the brink of really not much else, is coming down the stairs from his room to join his mother for dinner, just as they have been doing every night for decades. Good evening, mother. Good evening, Cuthbert. My, you're looking quite dashing tonight. Thank you, mother, but I'm afraid... This time, it's not going to work. What do you mean? Your empty flattery. I've had 30 plus years of it, and I've finally had enough. 30 plus years. But it seems like only yesterday. And I've made a decision, and don't try to talk me out of it. And what decision is that? I'm leaving home. What? It's out of the question. You're a know-nothing nincompoop. You'd surely be run right over by a bus stepping off the curb right in front of this house. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you say something, Mother? I was busy leaving the home. Yes, I did. I said you are a know-nothing nincompoop. Mother, I'm 37 years old. It's time. Please. On top of everything else, you're always rushing into things. Leaving home for the first time as a 37-year-old is not rushing into things. I don't think you realize what you're saying. Remember what happened to your older brother, Hensley? Strangely, I I don't recall what happened to my older brother, Hensley. You'll have to remind me. Against my sage motherly advice... He left the house for good when he was 43. Well, and then what happened to him? Two days later, he was eaten by piranhas. Uh, Piranhas? Yes. You see, Hensley always wanted to be an ichthyologist. A fish scientist, you see. What do you think that 800,000 gallon salt water fish tank in the backyard is doing there? So that's what that thing is. Ah. I thought it was a surplus water polo arena. Well, now I really am leaving. There goes plan B. It was the Putney Regional Water Polo World Cup Qualifying Tournament. I have so many tickets already sold. Ah, bugger. I filled that tank with an exotic array of sea creatures. And as per Hensley's very specific instructions, I went out and found every commercially available breeding pair of warty frogfish. And once it was up and running... Do you know what he said? No, mother, what did he say? Eh. Eh? Yes. Eh. 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 E-H exclamation point eh. Well, I must admit that seems rather ungrateful of him. And it was only one day later that Hensley announced he was leaving for the Amazon to live with piranhas. You see, he believed he was a piranha in his previous life and that he wished to once again paddle about the river in search of flesh with his toothy brethren. And then what happened? Well, the piranhas did recognize him, but not so much as a soulmate, but as lunch. All that was left of him was his collectible Air Jordan Double X3 Titaniums, which I received in a package with this message. Nice shoes, but we're sad to inform you that your son has taken his last jump shot, and it was a brick. How awful. What a terrible highlight reel to end your life on. Indeed. And if only he had stayed home to breed the warty frogfish as he had talked about so often, so passionately. Now you know what's weird. I vaguely remember that. But you just said... You didn't remember anything about your brother's leaving. Well, some things stay with you, Mother. Like warty frogfish dinner chatter, for instance. I may not have understood it then, and I'm still not sure I understand it now. But but nevertheless, I still look back upon that conversation about warty frogfish breeding habits with a rare fondness. 
Oh, goody! We, we still have a breeding pair out back, and I have no doubt they will welcome your reproductive coaching with open fins. I don't want to breed warty frogfish. That's not my destiny. How do you know? You'll, you'll never know unless you give it a whirl. No, no, mother, no. Hanley's fatal fishy fascination is not a footpath I wish to frenzily follow. <laughs> That's quite a load of alliteration there, son. FYI, I wouldn't uh, pull that sort of thing in a biker bar. They'd probably beat the diphthong out of you. But, but that's exactly the point. At this rate, I'll never get to be beaten up in a biker bar nor anywhere else. <laughs> never to wonder after such a drubbing which teeth are still left in my head and how exorbitant the dental and medical bills will be to put my face back together, at least to the point of a reasonable likeness of my former self for identification purposes in case I die at some point and you have to come find my body and identify my body and what if my, what if my eyes are... Suddenly, I will never know the taste of such worm-ridden, utterly foul fruits of experience if I never venture out that front door. How potentially tragic for you. So, Mother... I bid you adieu as I depart to begin my new life as a smelter. A smelter? No, it can't be! Yes, mother, a, a smelter! No, it can't be! No, no, no! The Faricus has struck again! First the piranhas are now smelting! Smelting! I'm smelting! Wait a minute, where did I hear this one before? What is this family curse that Mother Mouldyweather so opaquely speaks of? And what does it have to do with smelting? Will Cuthbert succeed in escaping the family clutches, or be pancaked by a bus some 30 seconds after walking out the front door? And is Hensley really dead, or is that just another fish story? And what about those Air Jordan X3 titaniums? Are they still collectible, or are they ruined by piranha bites? No, seriously, I want to know. I collect them and I resell market values very high on those. Tune in to the next episode of the Podcast of No Return and find out.